Hi, welcome to Mindful Conversations. My name is Greg Dwyer. I have a distinguished guest today. His name is John Zaffis. We're also with Father Larry and also with Debbie Elward. We're continuing the conversation about this topic, shadows of the dark and the paranormal. Welcome back, guys. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Greg. So we're on a roll. What about fear? I mean, how, how in the... How do you hold back your fear or how do you push past your fear to have these things happen? I mean, it's kind of uh, like running into a, a building that's on fire, isn't it? Yes, yeah. uh, conti continuously. Okay. How do you fight fear? How do you fight fear? I believe very strongly in the power of my faith to help uh, protect me. Okay. Um, am I, do I still go in and fear things? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I think the day, if the day ever comes where I no longer fear anything that's happening or being involved with, with the paranormal, it's time for me to get out of the work. Okay. No. You okay. have to have a side of fear. You, okay. you really do. Okay. I mean, you can't just go in and say, oh, nothing's going to happen to me because right. something's going to happen to you. Right, right. And, you know, keep your faith. There was a, there's a famous book out of the uh, written personal development book, you know, Feel feel the fear and do it anyway, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, and I guess in a sense you're like a warrior, you're going into a place where most people don't want to go. You know, Greg, we've been doing this for about 35 years now, each of us, if not more. Okay. And uh, at least 35 years. And, uh, you know, you kind of like carry a contingency plan in the back of your mind, you know, it's like a firefighter, if a uh, rope breaks, you have another rope to, to depend on, no safety nets, that kind of thing, your faith. and we. You put our trust in God, but we also put our trust in each other, we have faith in each other. See, if this was a movie, you know, and I was the director, and I was going to write a script, I would have you guys go into a haunted house, and then you guys start fighting against each other. Does we that, that happen? That does that happen? Does that does well, happen. I, I don't mean Debbie getting on Larry's nerves or Larry. But oh, I mean, I'm talking about. It's on everybody's nerves. But, <laughs> but is, is it possible that there could be more than just human relationship stuff going on? Does, oh, yeah. Does evil do that? You know what I mean? Get, oh, yeah, I think you so. You think so? I mean, we're in a car together, all three of us. He and I are yelling at each other and okay. screaming at each other. Okay. And he's just sitting there. And then all of a sudden he yells, shut up. And, you know, we start laughing. And it sort of breaks <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can, yeah. he and I can yell, uh, argue over the most stupidest things. And but do you too. think there's anything going on supernatural? Or you think you just... Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You do? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we get lost. Right. We're yelling at each other. Okay. I mean, we're ready... Forget it. We're not going there. The GPS goes crazy. I mean, oh. all these things. Right. Yeah, but one good thing about us is we agree to disagree. Okay. We don't take anything personal, you know, and if we have to change our minds and go over to somebody else's side on an opinion, sure. that's fine because we're all in this business to learn. Right. I think that's a, a, a good uh, foundation because the three of us have been, to, uh, you name it, and we've been involved with it. Okay. We'll argue and fight, but it's done and over with. It's yeah. like family. Right. It, it doesn't linger. Right. You know, and again, we all say what we want to each other. Right. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a little offended or something, and we'll curse each other out, but two seconds later, we're all speaking. Yeah, but, that's nice. So that's, it, to me, is a very healthy, uh, you know, friendship, uh, a working environment, because no matter what happens or what gets said, we're still there for all. Yeah. The three of us are you still there. You have to have trust right. yeah. in, in your yeah. team. Yeah. And I mean, I, I trust these two guys. I mean, I've been thrown out of places by demons. And, you know, they come to my rescue. So, mm -hmm. you know. That's amazing. What, what would you say to someone that just says, this is theater. This is BS. This is not true. I know a lot of people that are into mentalism or they're into cold reading or they're into performing magic, you know, for children's mm -hmm. parties. And they'll just say there's no such thing as the supernatural. What, what would you say to people like that? Uh, to me, I don't even bother arguing the fact of it anymore. You don't? I d because it's like there's just so much now. Right. There's so much proof. There's so much that, you know, uh, we take the step back and we look at it. And today, I, I can honestly tell you, I, most people, even if it's this much, they believe in something paranormal. They do. Whether there's an afterlife, reincarnation, um, you know, ghosts exist. I think the biggest controversial part to our work today, and that's not even as controversial as it used to be, is that does evil exist? Well, that's a great question. Does, does it exist per se 
in, you know, uh, a way that uh, people look at it, you know, from a religious perspective or a non-religious perspective. Right. So it's a lot more opened. It's a lot more even keeled today with people just taking that step back and going, what if? Right. What if? I've never experienced something. I've never seen anything happen, but I can't rule out. Good friend of mine had a haunting at his house. I know my friend. He's not crazy. You hear these stories right. more so today right. than any other time you know, in, in the past. Now, you guys went down to Ground Zero in New yes. York City. Yes. What did you feel there? Did you see anything, feel anything? Well, what we was your experience? On December 7th, okay. Pearl Harbor Day. Yep. And the whole app, the, most of the stuff had been cleared except for the, the cross. What year did you go? Do you remember? Was it soon oh, after? Yes. Yeah. It was yeah, 2001, uh, 2001, 2002. Yeah. Okay. So it was soon uh, after. Yeah, it was soon after. No museum there, nothing no. like that. Oh, no, no nothing was no. there yet. Okay. There were still, still T-shirts on the uh, yeah. fences yeah. and uh, cards left for people, yeah. uh, still pictures of people sure. that had uh, perished in it. Right. I mean, they were still looking for people. And um, the whole atmosphere down there. It, it, it was very somber mm -hmm. and very uh, electrifying. I mean, John took a picture and of the cross mm -hmm. because that was, that was something to see. That was the only thing of the building left was the cross. Right. And he took a picture and he got some kind of energy going through the picture. Right, which is in the book, Shadows yeah. of the Dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> to follow up on that, several years later, um, very good uh, friend of mine. Um, his partner had a business on one of the floors in there, and he perished. Oh. And he was presented uh, a piece of iron from the building, and it was in the shape of a cross. And he had it, and he started having paranormal activity in the house, and he Ooh. was very uncomfortable. He just got very uncomfortable with the whole scenario. And he had asked a mutual friend, he goes, would you ask, you know, Mr. Safferson, would you please take this and put it in his museum? Well, I was honored Wow. You know, to have a relic from, you know, yeah. uh, the tragedy and everything uh, in the museum uh, today. But I always, you know, look at it from the perspective is that, geez, here we were. The only thing I was interested in was taking a picture of the cross at the, the site. And I end up with an actual wow. piece of metal from the property shaped like a cross. What does your wife think of you bringing these things home? Well, my wife's always been used to it because I've always you know, right. done this. It's not anything right. unusual uh, to her. I think her biggest thing and my kids' biggest thing today is that they just want to make sure I got everything secured for when I'm out of here because they don't want to have to deal with it. I see. <laughs> I see. Right. Yeah. They must be believers too, right? I mean, they must be. Yeah, they're all believers. Yes. Right. Definitely okay. believers. Yep. So what do you say to someone that says this is not the devil, this is not spiritual, this is not demonic? This is psychological problems, that people are just crazy. Uh, or you think there's a combination involved? I think there's a combination. You do? Yeah. Because what, what, what easier way for the devil to get his message out than to make somebody look mentally ill? Right. You sure. know, he can hide behind the mental illness. Right. And not only that, but you look at the Bible, a lot of these people yeah. who are possessed, they were kind of crazy. They were ripping up their clothes. They were breaking the chains. They were doing some supernatural things, and they were cuckoo. But then when Jesus told the devils to leave, they were just sitting there like sane people, you know? So what about Latin? Let's talk about Latin. Do you, do you know the ritual in Latin, John, the exorcism? Do I know, but that young man down there does. <laughs> oh, he does. That so you didn't pick does. up Latin? You didn't learn it? Bit, bits and pieces, I know. I know a lot of the different words and everything uh, from hearing it. And... Uh, a key thing with that when the uh, exorcism is performed or anything and it's done in Latin, it's a lot more powerful. Why is that? I have a friend that loves the Latin mass. He swears Why by it? it. Why do you think Latin? Why? It's a dead language, right? Well, it's supposed to be a clear language. It's okay. more accurate. The words Because are, it hasn't changed throughout the yeah, years? That's that's exactly right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, um, sometimes we use Latin during uh, an exorcism because we try to gauge uh, the person's reaction. Now, if the person is possessed by the devil, there are certain prayers that I would say that they would um, go completely BS right. over them. Right. But you, you would know that. It's like it, a litmus it's true, test. It's true. It's true right. because you know this person 
uh, does not know anything about Latin or any other language other than other than English. Did you tell me a story last time about a person that spoke in Latin or spoke yes. in a different language? Debbie, what was that story? We had a woman that we brought um, to Bishop McKenna. Okay. And um, she was possessed by this demon that would allow her to only smoke a cigarette or drink coffee. What? Yeah, it was, she was playing with a pendulum, and the pendulum overtook her life. So she. Well, how does that happen? A pendulum. It's sort of like a, a a Ouija board. Ouija board. Yeah, she I was never getting, made the connection. She was getting messages through through the pendulum. You can get yes and no okay. questions, which is you, not a good idea. No. Okay. And this overtook her whole life. Oh no. And the demon allowed her to have cigarette or chocolate or coffee. She was brought to Bishop McKenna, and he was doing the the exorcism ritual in Latin. Okay. And she was repeating it. Which is not easy to do. No. With and sign language. And with sign language. Wait a minute. Did she know sign language? No, and she did not know Latin either. All right. So you know that this is not a psychological thing. Something supernatural right. is going on here. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Ouija board. My mother hated it. Like, uh, what do you think of someone that says, guess what? I just went to the store and I bought a Ouija board for a birthday gift or, you know, Hasbro or whatever the company does. What do you think? I... Uh, Per se, it's not the board or the planchet, it's the individuals that use it. You mean the intention? The intention and the purpose behind it. So it could be just a party game and no big deal? No big deal, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't expect you to say that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I know people that um, play the Ouija board, they've never had a problem. Really? We end up dealing with the people that have opened up the door and bring spirit through. Now, it can attach to the board. I have many boards that definitely have a spirit attached to them. Okay. But... Again, it, I have to take a look and have that comprehension that, you know, it's a tool. That's all that it is. It's just right. a tool. Right. We're the catalyst. We bring that spirit right. It's through. your intention yes. and your and will. Again, yes, free will. Right. Uh, once that, you know, that person establishes that and the communication comes and they got the planchet moving on the board, you know, people have to be careful. They can be tricked. Right. It could be saying, you know, it's grandma communicating with him. It doesn't necessarily mean it's grandma. It could be a demon. It definitely could be a demon coming through. Right. Now, the running joke with me all the time is that I've never played the Ouija board. I got offered $10,000, and I still won't play it. Yeah. How did I'm that happen? I'm not playing it. Why I'm did someone just, offer you that? Just, well, it was for a TV show. I and, see. You know, okay. But. Okay. Talk about your TV shows. I, I must confess, I don't own a television, so I haven't seen you on television, but I know you're on television. What's the TV show that you've done or you're doing? And tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was called Haunt the Collector. I did okay. it for three seasons. Yep. Um, and what it, we based it off of was uh, people that had items in their home that were causing the problem. I see. So, you know, naturally all the episodes were about haunted items. Right. So, because um, it, it, it's a running joke with me, people say, well, Every one of your episodes is about a haunted item. It was called Haunted Collector. <laughs> so, That's you know, we're going to talk about possession. We weren't going to, you know, yeah, yeah, get yeah. into the uh, other aspects of it. And I thought it would have been, you know, something unique and uh, to a point where it would help people to understand that, you know, we have haunted houses, haunted land. Right. We have haunted items. Right. Thus, it opened up the doors for people getting a better understanding that they can have a cursed object or they can have a haunted item that can be causing issues within their homes that or their businesses. That makes you think when you go to a tag sale. See, you I, know, yeah. kind of like, do I want to buy this? Right? Or am I crazy here? No. Um, you know, for the longest time, I had a lot of antique dealers ready to, they, they wanted nothing to do with me. Right. Because everybody says, oh, don't buy antiques because they're haunted. Right. 99% of our antiques out there have nothing with them. I see. Okay. You know, most things aren't haunted. We just hear about the items that do have something that's attached to them. 1%. So, yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people that collect antiques, no issues whatsoever. Right. right. But, um, again, I had worked on this one case. You'll love this one. Uh, a very wealthy family had actually bought a 15, from the 1500s, a chapel and reassembled it in their house. A chapel? A chapel. Okay, and what happened? They had so much paranormal activity in this mansion, it was unbelievable. And we were going back and forth and we were talking about it and I go, well, you purchased an actual ch chapel. I believe it was Spain, wasn't it Spain? Spain? I think it was Spain. And I go, do you realize what transpired in that chapel? And they go, well, prayer and I go, exorcisms and all these other things right. and blah 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 and they got totally freaked out over it well needless to say 
as we went back and forth and I was trying to help them or anything, the husband just got so taken back. He goes, John, I never would have thought of something like that. Yeah, because you think of a chapel, a good it's, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Right, yeah. Um, they literally had it all disassembled and they sold it off. Right. So again, you know, you got to be careful with things because you just never know. But I mean, you know, it's not often somebody buys a whole chapel and assembles right. it in their house. But right, right. These things do occur and they do happen. What about psychic ability? Do you? Let's go right down the line. We'll start with you, Father. Do you believe there are people that are absolutely clairvoyant? Maybe you're sitting next to one of them. I think uh, I might be. Uh, or psychic that they have like maybe the gift of knowledge. Do you think? What do you think? Sure, absolutely. You um, do. I think they're um, the church calls them charism. So. They're gifts given by God. I love that. I've been saying that for years. It's, it's an old-fashioned term. It is. But a lot of people have it, and they don't know why, or they think they might have it, or, or something like that. It's just one of those intangible things you're, you've got. You're either born with it or, or you're not. So in Corinthians, I think it's First Corinthians, it talks about the gift of knowledge. Is it possible that somebody could say, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is a spiritual gift. That's called intuition. Intuition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, my wife likes to say she's got the uh, gift of discernment of spirits. Debbie, tell us about that. Oh, I know a lot of people come up to me. They want the gift that I have. I'm jealous. Sure. No, yeah. Uh, you don't no, want it? it? Why? It, tell me why. I'm on 24 hours a day. You can't shut it off? I can't shut my gift off. And no. I think it's because of the work I do. Okay. And at times it's infuriating. I mean, I'll call him up and I'll say, what is going on? Why mm -hmm. can't I sleep? What, what I had this dream, and a lot of my dreams do coincide with what's going on. I bet, yeah. You yeah. know, and it's not. I can't pick lotto numbers. Okay. I, you know, I do see dead people. You do. And it is disheartening to to some degree because I have people that uh show up and they'll say, you know, I want you to go over to my my niece, tell her I can't do that. Why? Why can't you do it? What if I walked up to you and said? <laughs> your, your, your mother just came to me. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, if I didn't know you, I think right. you were crazy, but I know but you. But I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, no, that's I tough. I mean, it's sort of a slap in the face. I, I'm not like the TV show where she goes up to people and say, you know, I'm a psychic. I, you know, right. your, your great aunt Lou came and right. I can't do that. See, I think there's also a group of people that pretend to be psychic. Yes, mm -hmm. You know, they do cold oh, yeah. reading or they do fishing and they, yeah. you know, yeah. they're entertainers maybe. Right. Well, you uh, know, fishing's okay because you, you know, you can say, um, are you here to see a young man right. or a young woman? Right. Because two spirits might come into the, sure. when you're doing a reading. I see. That's a different kind of fishing. Okay. Than to say, oh, you miss your father. Your father had glasses? W no. W was her name Mary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Stuff like, yeah. that's different. Yeah. You know, that's a different kind of fishing. Yeah. To ask questions. Right. To help validate which spirit goes with you and which spirit goes with somebody else. Sure. It's okay. What do you think, John? Have you run into people, besides Debbie, that you say, wow, this person has a gift, like they, they know. Well, Ken, uh, uh, in my entire career, there hasn't been um, a situation where I haven't worked with somebody that's gifted psychic or a medium. I okay. work with a lot of them. Okay. Um, Lorraine Warren. She was. She was an extremely, she really was a gifted individual. I didn't know that psychically, yes? Oh, yeah. No, oh, she, uh, she, she would call it discernment right. when she would go in. Wow. And, you know, a lot of people... You know, would say, you know, she really didn't have it. I used to watch her walk in cold and just read cases like you couldn't believe. It. Really? Like now, she's channeling it. Yeah. I mean, you know, she would know all this different stuff. Now, you got to stop and remember, back in the day, we didn't have the computers. We didn't have right. cell phones. Right. Lorraine wasn't running down to go check anything out at Town Hall or anything. Right. Right. She wasn't so faking it. Just, it. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. happening. Right. But again, you know, with that, in over the course of the years, there are many people that are very gifted, psychic mediums that are personal friends of mine and you know when they call me up with information or something are you doing this are you working on that right. or you know I picked up on this or that I always keep that information because you don't know what it's going to tie into right it's going to tie you I have one very good friend and uh, Debbie's very well aware of her she lives down south wants nothing to do with the paranormal wants nothing to do with any of this right she'll call me out of the clear blue with information like I just sit there and go there's no way for you to know all this. Wow. And she goes, I can't stand it. Why do they got to come talk to me about you and blah, blah, blah. It, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing when you deal with people that are truly uh, gifted or, you know, they do pick up on things 
because they are tormented people, like Debbie's saying. Right. They get this information, and a lot of them just don't want it, and they still get it. Right. right. I mean, I have peop strange people coming up to me in the store to tell me their deepest, darkest secret. That you've never met before. I've never met them. I'm standing in line at a Walmart, right. and these people are telling me their deepest, darkest secrets. Why? I mean, it, you know, is there a sign? They're drawn to you. Yeah. Is there a sign over my head that says open for business or something? Wow. Because they'll, they'll come to me. Wow. And that friend of his, uh, she and I never met. But she and I coincide with things. Yeah. She'll say, Debbie, uh, you know, and I'll say, have you heard from Bonnie? And, you know, it's. Hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. So you can't make this stuff up. No. 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 And you don't know where it's coming from. No. I mean, again, you know, dealing with it and listening and getting the information, you know, from these individuals has been able to help people. Right. So to me, that that's an important element with right. it. I mean, she'll call me out of the clear blue and, you know, just start telling me different things. And I'll be like, OK, you, there's no way for you to be knowing right. what I just got involved with or what I didn't get involved with. Because he's just opened the email. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, right. You know, or she'll start talking about a case or getting involved with something. I was teasing her one day and we were going back and forth. The three of us were driving down to this case. And I go, you're not gifted. You don't pick up on anything like that. <laughs> she rattled off the color of the house, what the house looked like, the picket fence in front of the house, the shrubbery in front of the house. We pulled in front of the house. Larry and I looked at each other and went, and she goes, yes, satisfied. And I went, yes. Wow. Wow. So, you know, again, and and she had none of that knowledge. When he right. takes right. me out on a case, right. he won't tell me a thing. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So that it uh, helps validate the client. You know, I'll go in and I'll pick up the areas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I miss a few. Sure. But, you know, I, I, I will pick up on it and it helps the client because it's, wow, somebody else is feeling this. You know, somebody wow. else is experiencing this. Wow. What about witchcraft? What about Wicca? Let's talk a little bit about this. It gets into religion in a sense, right? What Absolutely. Do you know, what do you know about Wicca and, and the crossover of witchcraft? Anything you want to say about it? Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I have a lot of Wiccan friends. You do? I have a lot of pagan friends. You do? Absolutely. Again, I'm a very analytical individual, okay. and I respect what other people do because I think there's a lot of misconceptions with how people view things and look at things. I mean, it doesn't mean they're out, you know, digging up graves or you know, doing right. some of these horrific, horrible things that people do that tie in with some of the darker stuff. But, um, you know, when you study religion or you study demonology, it takes you back thousands of years. Right. And, you know, you have to study a lot of these different uh, belief systems, and you find that a lot of things incorporate. Right. And right. you look at it and you study that, and it's an important thing to uh, uh, keep in mind what it's all about and how these different things tie into, you know... Uh, our Catholicism right, in, right. into Judaism. Exactly. And it's amazing. It's it is. amazing once you study a lot of it and you get a, a comprehension and understanding of it. So again, I, you know, look at it. I study it. I have a lot of good friends that are involved with a lot of different things. They're not hurting anybody. They're not doing anything to anybody. That's their belief system. That's their right to practice what they want to practice. Right. And I respect people. Right. That's a very important element um, with people, you know, because they're, if a person isn't a very religious person from Christianity or what have you, to me, it does not make them a bad person. Right. I, I don't look at that. I believe in the fact that people uh, need to always look at things from, you know, the positive end of the light. Mm -hmm. If you're going down that dark road, then I look at it differently. Right, right. Well, what's your take? Um. I feel that it, you have to embrace everything. I mean, in Wicca, when they cleanse a house, they use incense. They use sage, don't they? Sage, or the, I've seen them use uh, frankincense okay. and myrrh. Yep. Um, they use salt. Talk about salt. Why salt? Because it's a natural item that absorbs the energy. Okay. If you put salt around a perimeter of a room where they have ad activity in, mm -hmm. the uh, salt will draw in the um, energy that they need okay. to make this activity happen. Mm -hmm. We use salt in our holy water. 
the I, you priest, read my mind. I was just going to say about putting yeah. a pinch of salt right, right there. Yes. And yes, so, good. I mean, a lot of it, as John said, goes... Overlaps. And, yeah. And yeah. if you want to help people, you sort of have to embrace it all. Because um, you go to a house that's having Indian problems. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they live on Indian land yep. and they're having problems. Right. You sort of got to know exactly how the Indians did it mm -hmm. in order to quiet the the Indian spirits down. Mm -hmm. um, if you go into a house where they, they had Wiccan, they have a, uh, an altar, you got to respect that altar, you know, because that is their faith and that is their belief So you don't system. say that's the devil? No. Wiccans don't believe in the devil. Father, what do you say? How do you weigh in on this? Well, I've worked with a lot of Wiccan and uh, pagan people over the years, and I would, would much rather work with them than a lot of Christian ministers. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you right there. That's, that's, uh, that's really controversial. I, I, tell us why. I, I will not name names, but okay. um, for the most part, <laughs> the Wiccan uh, pagan community has done an awful, awful lot of uh, good work when it comes to doing clearings and okay. uh, helping people that are involved with the paranormal. Uh, I think one of the reasons why a lot of people are attracted to Wiccan paganism is because each person is their own priest or their priestess. There's yes. not really a, um, a uh, central authority. There's no hierarchy. No, no. Right? Everything's level. Yeah, a lot of people um, enjoy that because they don't like the strictures or the structures, whatever right. the best sure. word would be. Sure. Everybody's like on their own. They might have a coven. They might not. They right. might go through an initiation. They might not. Right. But I, I think uh, many of them are very, very well read in regards to our religions, not only paganism, but religion as a whole. Right. And a lot of them are, in fact, psychic, I believe. Okay. And a lot of them are Reiki practitioners also, so they, they do a lot of um, uh, personal healing, and they're also herbalists and mm -hmm. things like that. They're very, very much alternative. Right. And then there's medicine, alternative religion. Then there's shamanism, which I don't know that much about, but mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's a lot of overlap with that, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, it's mm -hmm. a form of uh, expression of faith. And, mm -hmm. you know, have you had any experience with shamanism at all? Oh, absolutely. Oh, you have? Okay. Oh, you probably yes. wrote a book about that. Or uh, I probably could. Yeah, okay. I, I've worked with uh, several medicine men and just watching what they do within their culture and um, tying in. Uh, with so many things we incorporated into our belief systems is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I've been there when some of the ceremonies have been performed. Wow. They are extremely powerful. I bet. Very, very powerful. And again, we have to realize and, and take all that into consideration. Their beliefs and their practices, you know, they predate organized religions. Right. The, oh. pr the problem I have with that mm -hmm. is you can't take up an offering. <laughs> <laughs> right father that's true <laughs> that's the problem with these unorganized religions <laughs> you know how do you take up an offering it's just so well listen i really appreciate this second interview it's an honor to have all three of you here how do folks get a hold of you good oh Thank they you. can uh contact us at larry.lward at yahoo.com okay and we are uh, both on facebook excellent excellent spell your last name e-l-w-a-r-d excellent very good and then John. The uh, best way to get a hold of me is just put johnzaffis.com in and it takes you to all my sites. My right. book sites takes right. you to absolutely everything. My email is on there and my telephone number is on there. And one of the easiest people in the world to get a hold of. Now, are you still doing lectures all over the world with colleges? Yes, I do uh, campuses. Uh, mainly in the fall. Right. Uh, Halloween, October, that, November. Yeah. Right. You know, September, October is uh, colleges and universities. Right. Um, all of us do a lot of conventions. It's a right. very big field today. Right. right. All over the place doing these different conventions with all the different people that are involved in our field. Excellent. Well, it's a pleasure to have all three of you. I know we gave you something to think about here on Mindful Conversations. If you have anything going on, reach out to one of these three. They will help you. We'll see you next time. Mind yourself. Thanks.